Mark, first question, third row. Got one for both of you guys. Uh, Clay, uh, Steph set a finals record tonight. He hit nine three-point shots, um, some of them under incredible duress, some late in the shot clock. Which were your favorites and why? Mm. Um, probably the one that stands out the most to probably all you guys and everyone in this arena when he was uh, – about seven seconds on the clock and just kept going backwards. I don't know why, but um, <laughs> he just threw it up. And I don't think he had any chance of going in, but that was kind of like a dagger shot and just gave us all the momentum back. So I think we went up 14 points. So that was my favorite and hit nothing but net. And uh, that was just a very good sight to see. Steph, why do you attempt shots where you're going backwards and nobody seems to understand what the heck it is you're doing out there? And how deflating is it to the opponent when those go through the hoop? I mean, that situation, I was trying to get some space. I thought I had a layup at first, and I fumbled the ball and then tried to see where the the uh, defense was, and Kevin Love was right on me, and I actually lost a dribble for a hot second. And the only way to get a shot was to keep going back. And, I mean, I try all sorts of shots at, at some point or another, but at that point, it's just, it's just feel and let it go, and thankfully it went in. And uh, A big moment where... We had a significant lead. We could extend it a little bit and create some, some separation down the stretch. And it was, a, it was a cool moment, for sure. Mark on the right side. Clay, Mark, Medina Bay Area News Group. Uh, first, how is your ankle holding up overall? And what do you think was key in being able to play through that and have the kind of game you had? Uh, being on the training table for, it felt like, three straight days. Some I'm not used to, but at this point in the season, any means necessary. And the ankle feels great. I won't do much tomorrow, and I'll do a little bit Tuesday, but um, to conserve all I got for Wednesday because uh, um, I don't want to play with it. You know, it's uh, something that you, just, that you use a lot. I know I don't realize how much you use your ankle till you hurt it, but um, <laughs> I'm going to. You should have asked me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, yeah, that's that. So. <laughs> the side and left. Hi, Rick Tittle with 95.7 The Game. It seemed right from the tip-off you guys were completely focused. Everybody was on the same page. It was like serious business. Like you weren't going to leave anything left from the other game. I mean, we watched the film, and uh, obviously from game one, LeBron had an amazing night. Uh, but a lot of it was just um, a lack of kind of sense of urgency early in possessions to try to just be physical. Uh, Clay, Draymond, and Katie especially were were huge, you know, in that transformation uh, in, to Game Two with just putting up a little bit of resistance and just trying to make them work. Um, and we we still had some slip ups and things we can correct going into Game Three, but energy and effort and physicality and um, all that from the jump was was pretty you know dialed in, and it gave us a lot of momentum and confidence uh, to. You know, have a better start to the game and then sustain that over 48 minutes for sure. Anthony, third row on the side. Anthony Slater with the Athletic. Steph, you've kind of, you've always had that kind of pass and scatter to the corner three in your repertoire, but suddenly, really since the middle of the Houston series, you're doing it a ton. Uh, what sparked that, and, and why is it working so well? We've been doing that for a long time. It's just, just everything's under a microscope in, in the playoffs, and especially how teams guard us. Um, you know, with a lot of switching and things like that, you got to find different ways to create space. You can't – ISOs are, are great, and um, and we have guys that are capable of doing that all across the board. But when we keep the ball moving and keep bodies moving, good things usually happen. So um, I think that's – when we're dialed in offensively, we we're, were really uh, – you know, efficient with, with getting into the paint, kicking it out, finding an open guy, whether it's me you know, relocating to the corner or Clay coming off a pin down or uh, Draymond getting an open three. Um, you know, we've been pretty locked into that to that type of uh, offense for sure. Rachel in the fourth row. Clay, you said yesterday that you'd never taken a painkiller shot. Is that still true today? Yes. <laughs> Steph, can you talk about uh, Clay's resiliency physically? I mean, he uh, it's, the, it's the finals. I know he's going to give it every every shot to uh, get his body right. Um, little known fact, I think the – what's that? What's today, Sunday? So Friday he was getting treatment and still tried to manage to walk out to the court and take a couple shots just to keep his rhythm. Um, but he didn't do much movement. 
shows you kind of how much he loves the game um, and wants to be out there for, for us as a team and for himself and enjoy this moment. So um, it's great to have him out there. And I know these next 40 hour, 48 hours are big for him to, to keep, uh, keep getting recovery and treatment and, and all that to, to be ready for game three. Front row. Uh, for both you gentlemen, uh, Ryan Leong from Associated Press Broadcasting. You guys have always talked about being locked in and knowing where you are now in the finals, up 2-0. Just how focused are you guys knowing going into game three that could be the turning point for the series? We're extremely focused. This team has been down 2-0 the last series and came back to win it. So it's nothing to feel happy about being up 2-0. Um, uh, this team plays great at home, and we expect their other guys to even play better at home too, not just LeBron. So... Uh, we're not going to relax at all because this team has been a down and out before and counted out by the media. And we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to focus on what we can do to win game three. Art, over here. Um, around here, we know what Draymond does in. in Draymond. Uh, Draymond. Draymond. <laughs> I, I dropped the D. Gotcha. Uh, Arts Bander. Anyway. Whoa. <laughs> what didn't we see? <laughs> he. he he went out and, and covered uh, LeBron. What don't we see that Draymond does so effectively on defense? I mean, you see it all. He's everywhere. Uh, he's a defensive player of the year for a reason. Um, he loves those challenges, loves being in, in the fight, every possession. Um, and he just finds ways to not only if it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup and get a stop, but plug holes in the defense all over the court. So um, I don't know what le much left he has in the tank on that end that did anybody hasn't seen. He just continually does it over and over and over again at a high level, um, making you know strong defensive plays to to help us get stops and and uh, you know be the defensive team that we've been all you know these these last three four years and. Uh, in this playoff run, uh, that's why the numbers look so good and why we, why we do what we do. Michael? Uh, Michael Lee, Yahoo Sports. Uh, Steph, at the end of the third quarter, it uh, looked like you tripped um, after you uh, missed the three and you stood up and got in Kendrick Perkins' face. I just want to know what would lead a 6'3 guy to get in somebody's 6'10's face and start talking smack? And did that do anything uh, to get you fired up for the final quarter? Much ado about nothing. <laughs> good movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. 